comparable for guys that we've seen play? Would, would be similar to that guy? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, he's a little quicker. Um, um, and I, I think a little, like, no, like, Tyler Johnson's a real good player. I think Kyler, like, gets after it on the forecheck, and he separates guys from pucks, even with that size. So there's a little bit of a difference there. You guys, uh, you get Chris Russell done today. Maybe just talk about, you made it clear at the end of the season you wanted to get it done, and at any point along the way, was there any doubt in your mind it would get done? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Probably not, but like we didn't, we like he, we, we didn't protect him. So he obviously he, you know, a team like Las Vegas was able to talk to him, and I, I was informed that they did talk to him. So, um, you know, you, you hope you build up some capital with them throughout the year, and, and uh, he, he's a he's a great team guy. I think he added a real necessary component to our D, and uh, we got through that expansion moratorium, and, and we were able to finish it off in the, the last couple of days. Just a thought on Elaine's openness to strike the type of deal he did with it back diving. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it was our openness. <laughs> like, I think you want to, you generally want a little bit of a flatter deal, but I mean, I understand him wanting that structure, and, and uh, you know, so we were okay to, to, to come to an agreement on that. Anytime we interview you about Chris Russell, I mean, there's always this element that, uses, that maybe doesn't see the value in his game. What numbers do you guys keep on him? What what sorts of things do you guys see in his game that make him so valuable that basic analytics wouldn't show? Well, I, I understand there's a, every time we, either I mention him or there's some movement on him, there's a, a whole firestorm of, of analytics. So, uh, you know, he, he just doesn't, he doesn't put up a lot of points, but I mean, he, he, he skates. We talked about when I signed him originally about his entries, his entry passes, about those are numbers that are among the highest in the league, his, 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 uh, his offensive zone entries. Uh, he competes, he blocks shots, he settles the D down, he plays both sides. I mean, very, very valuable player, and, and he's a leader, and he's competitive. So, um, you know, he, he can log big minutes for his size. He can log big minutes, and he's a very competitive player. So there's a lot, a lot to like about Chris. He just, he just doesn't, you know, he doesn't put up the, uh, the the 40 or 50 points that everybody wants. Did he, like, at the end of the regular season, did you have a pretty good idea if you wanted to sign him or not? But with his performance in the playoffs, did your willingness to maybe look at a, a longer deal or some more money involved, did he, did he really do himself some favors with his play in the playoffs? Um, sure, but we, 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 we started discussions back in January, you know, and it just, like, I had to let some things fall into place before we... A number of things have fallen in place before we could ultimately uh, sign him, um, but it's a dialogue that we started relatively early. Um, I, I know he got injured, and, and there's the, there's there's you know he's the type of player that's going to get injured the way he plays. But um, you know it was he and he had a real strong playoffs. It's just he, he was someone we wanted to sign all along. Just back to Yamamoto in our interview with him, he did not concede that he would automatically be going back to. Uh, Spokane. I, don't, I know you guys had multiple conversations, but and he is a late born, you know. He so he's a little bit more mature kid, even though he's smaller. Just a thought on that yeah. attitude. I, I mean, I mean, just on its face, I don't think that he would be with us when the season starts. But he, Kyler can do a lot of things, and he's he's pretty he's a pretty driven kid. The one, the one thing that sticks out in my mind is when we were having uh, we took him out to dinner at the combine, and he and he, he we're just eating there and, and, and talking, and he's like. He said, why should we draft you? And that's a standard question you ask, and I, I've never really heard this answer. He said that uh, you got to draft me because otherwise I'm going to come back and haunt you. So he's a pretty confident kid. I mean, that was an impressive answer, and, uh, and he backs it up with his play. So um, never say never, but we'll see. Is there anything particular you want to try and get done on, on day two of the draft? You've got some third-round picks. Are there needs on your roster? Well, we're going to we're gonna go a little need-based need base as as it progresses here so we we've got we've broken up our list into into categories so you probably won't see us jump around but we'll get we're going to try and you know unless someone falls in our lap we're going to try and address some needs anything on the roster do you think um like the, on your starting roster next year like do you, do you see yourself making any moves for oh uh, you know, I, I i i don't think so i've had a couple of discussions but i don't think so